Hello dolls. Today I am going to be talking about 200 Motels. It was a film I was in in 1970. Uh, Frank Zappa wrote, directed, produced, starred in everything. He was always so darn ahead of his time. He actually made this movie on video. And here is the cover of the new re-release, the big box set of 200 Motels. Um, Zappa sent it to me because I am featured in the book because I got to write about it. Some liner notes for 200 Motels. It was quite an experience. I was in London already, and uh, I was in between two boyfriends. I was trying to break up with one because I'd fallen in love with another one. And I was in London and wanted to be back in L.A. because I was crazy about Tony Sales at that point. For those of you who've read my book, know this story. So I uh, didn't know what to do. I was in such a conundrum because I was with this guy from the Pink Fairies, a sweetheart guy, Sandy Sanderson. But it was he was sort of a rebound from Marty. It's quite a story. It's in I'm with the band. But just in time, I got a call from Gail saying Frank wants to talk to you about, you know, being in the movie 200 Motels, which he had, they just, the whole family had just arrived to London, and he was prepping the film, which was going to shoot way out in Pinewood Studios, out in the middle of nowhere. I went over there, talked to him about it, did some sort of little audition. He knew me very well already. And he said, okay, you got the part. <laughs> it was the part of a soprano, and he already had someone singing, an opera, soprano, and but she would, couldn't act, apparently. So he wanted me to play the part of the soprano, but not singing. <laughs> so here's me then. I was kind of a looker back then. You know, I think it's so funny how we, we view ourselves. Back then, I sure didn't feel that way. I was always not sure enough about myself. Of course, I think, how old was I here? I was 22, maybe, in 1970. Not quite 22. Uh, and I sure had a blast on this film. Let me show you some. This is this is supposed to be me here, which is really funny. Oftentimes, since I was sort of flat-chested and still am, well, not flat, flat, but, you know, they would give me bosoms. So the artist put big bosoms on me. <laughs> Cracked me up. This was a huge poster on Sunset Boulevard, too, and there I was with giant tits. So here's Frank overseeing everything, and this is Mark and Howard, uh, Howard Kalen, who I just did a podcast with, old dear friend, and Mark Volman. They were the, the Turtles, uh, and they were Flo and Eddie in Frank's band, The Mothers of Invention. So they're in the movie, and Miss Lucy from the GTOs was in it. She was topless all the time. She never, she was half naked all the time, so she's half naked in the movie. Here's Ringo. Talk about an exciting thing. He was my second Beatle. I'd actually met George Harrison very briefly. I was so thrilled Ringo was going to be in it. He was playing Frank, which is pretty funny. <laughs> he and Frank were dressed alike every day on the set, all in purple. Keith Moon was playing the nun, and I met him on the set. And we became, you know, real buds at the time. I was still too crazed about two different boys to even think of him as a a boyfriend or a lover, whatever you want to call what we called each other back then. <laughs> but we certainly later became really enthralled with each other. And actually, he carried me off the set that day when, when the whole thing was over. So if you guys have not seen 200 Motels, please see it. And this box set is so cool. It comes with a giant poster of 200 Motels which is really rad. You know, you can see how big it is. 200 motels. And a key. 200 motels. So fabulous. It was quite a trip making this thing. You know, it, it was two weeks, but it was, you were enclosed in this world with these amazing people. And I got to watch all of it. Frank was so, such an amazing director. I had a few scenes with Theodore Bikel, who was my uncle in it, this guy, and he he refused to let have the F word said by a woman in his presence. So several of my lines were cut, which is a real drag. 
<laughs> but I had such a good time. It was such a remarkable experience. I got to see the mothers play over and over and over again. Another funny story about this is Wilfred Bramble was set to play um, the driver, Ringo's driver. No, wait a minute. No, he was set to play one of the band members, Wilfred Bramble, who was in um, A Hard Day's Night. He played Paul's grandpa. But he arrived on the set and was so horrified by what he saw that he just walked off the set. And so what happened was Ringo's driver was really cute. His name was Martin. He got the part. He got cast in it. It was one of those last-minute things. And... I don't know. I, I don't know what else to say about it. It was such a ball. Frank would come up to me after my, you know, few scenes and just hug me and say how good I did and everything. He always made you feel like you were somebody. Frank Zappa could pull things out of you that you didn't even know were in there and and cre and make you more creative and make you feel like you'd done something good, even if it was really goofy. He was a real master at that. And I miss him very much. So... I hope you can check out this fantastic box set. And I, I'm so proud of being able to write a whole bunch of liner notes. I wrote my whole story about, about being on this amazing project. So thank you. I'll see you again soon.